Hey guys, J Base Vegas here. Uh, let's do our plug before we get into whatever the hell I titled this. Um, hey, back twenty dollars Kindle Unlimited, free ninety nine minus ninety nine Kindle Digital ten dollars. Should you give it a rating? Rating just give it a star. Rating if you give it a rating and review. I shout you out like these lovely people down here. Uh, if you want to read the first five chapters free, that is available on scribblehub.com and a Wattpad. I don't know. It's like they, they know what I'm streaming and they feel the need to start. To, it, Max, if you see this at any point, bro, why do you always start sending 300 texts when I start streaming? Like, it's almost exactly what I start streaming, Max. What are you doing? Alright. Uh, first five chapters available on ScribbleHub.com and Wattpad to read free. Uh, if you want to support, consider subscribing here on Twitch or on YouTube. Um, YouTube is up to date, I believe. Um, other ways to support, we got Patreon. That, that link is in the panels down below and also in the description on YouTube. Uh... And we have a donation link that's also in the panels, that's also in chat, and that'll be in the description on YouTube as well. Um, donate one cent, and you get a shout out. Like, if you, if you donate anything, like, that's, that's what's up. Um, other than that, let's, uh, we're gonna get into, we're gonna do Monolon's origin today. I think we had the beats done. Uh, raid for what? Welcome to the stream, moms. Uh, for the bugs, not sponsored, but you know, as soon as we put ACs in, the bugs they they find a way. They find a way. I put tape over each of the, you know the little scrunchy things next to the AC units, the window units. I put tape over the gaps in them. Here we go. We I'm bro. I'm gonna have to mute this again. Here why? Who knows I'm streaming? He's about to get Yeah this God dang it. Yeah, I put tape over all the scrunchy things. The only way the bugs should be able to get in, if they're stupid enough to, is through the actual AC where the air blows itself. But they find other ways. It's hot outside and they're like, bro, I'm not trying to be outside in the sun. So they come in my house and then they die. I don't like bugs. I don't like killing bugs. I'm just trying to take precautionary measures because I'm trying to get as little bugs in my house this summer as possible I am terrified of bugs so that's that's the issue Grim Reality appreciate the follow my guy appreciate the follow let's update the uh the follower goal and we are one away from the next goal thanks to you uh which one is it this one okay. but yeah bugs I, I can't stand bugs and I I, I live alone I live alone. Little Kelly. You know. Where do you see my name? My name isn't posted everywhere. Uh. Yo, what up? Uh, Sakaj jokes backwards. I remember when you followed me. But can bugs kill you over there? No. It's not Australia. But. I'm just terrified of anything creepy crawly. I think I'm just very squeamish in general. I don't like mice either. 
like there's a dead mouse in my basement and I'm waiting for the opportunity to call my pest control people to come and pick it up because I'm that terrified of even being near it. Like my heart sinks whenever I see a, a mouse dead in a trap in my house and it, it's, it's like I'm not expecting it and then I'm not going to touch it. So yeah and then <laughs> bugs are, are just all of it's bad. All of it's bad. Uh, mice are cute. Dead ones, not so much. Mice are cute, bro. Ugh. Okay. I didn't grow up with mice. And there are certain people I know that did. And they hate mice. I can see both sides of the argument. The only, my thing is, if a bug or animal is not where it's supposed to be, I'm pretty terrified. So if I see a mouse running around in my basement and I don't own a mouse, I'm probably freaking out. That that like I said, that's what that's what like any animal though. Like if you got a pet mouse and it's running around in your basement, I'm not scared of that. If you got a pet squirrel for whatever reason, I don't know anybody that's ever had a pet squirrel. It's a little weird, even though they're kind of just like tree mice. Anyway, um, yeah, if it's not a pet, kind of freaked out. Like, I see squirrels outside all the time, and if a, if a squirrel were to get into my house and start running around and scratching everything, I'd probably be freaked out. I've never had a squirrel in my house, or one that I've known of, thankfully, but, yeah. So again, we got the raid not sponsored for any any bug that uh wants to come up in here. And let me fill you guys in. I was so terrified of this stuff, these things growing up and currently that if I wasn't alone, I'd have whoever was with me kill whatever it was. Take that how you will, crack jokes, whatever. That's just how I am with that type of stuff. The bugs, the, the pests, all of that. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to touch it if I don't have to. I don't want to go near it if I don't have to. My brother was the MVP growing up because he was fine with killing them if they got into the house. And I'd just watch him do it and be like, yo, doing a great job. My little brother. But I don't know why... It's not like I had a bad experience growing up with bugs or anything like that. Like, they've never crawled on me or anything like that. I'm just terrified in general. Though I did pick up one thing. I don't, I think I was already terrified of bugs and pests and stuff before this. But there was a time when I was at the beach and I was just digging in the sand as far as I could go with my, I think I had a shovel. And it was like wet sand and I was just going and going and going. And I saw something squirming at the bottom. I picked it up. It looked like shrimp. It was pink. I picked it up. It wiggled. And I threw it back down in the sand. And I didn't know where it went. But it looked like a bug. It was... I think that was a... I don't want to say a crab. Because then I, if it's not, I'd seem foolish. I know... I saw something about those types of things. Where uh, an animal of some kind... It's young. is buried in the sand. Um, but that effed me up. I still remember the, the vibration, the feeling of when I picked it up by its like tail. It kind of looked like, a, uh, oh God. What are those prehistoric bugs? Tri trilobites? Is that what they're called? I think that's what they're called. Okay, you may, UK mice are cute. Do they have British accents? If so, then it like is there a British accent on their squeak? Because if so, that that'd be pretty cool. I'd still try and kill it, but that'd still be pretty cool. You and Bugs always been that way. Uh, you also need to update your Patreon. Oh, I appreciate it. Thanks for the the 
the pledge. Thank you for the pledge. You're my first patron. I'm going to update the goal uh, after the stream, but I appreciate it. Uh, British accents and top hats. I was going to say top hats and maybe like a little monocle too. Don't ask me where they get any of that. I can understand the British accent, but th is there somebody that makes little mouse top hats like, like Stuart Little or something? Is there a is there a British mice clothing line? And and a glass company, like glasses company? Because for a monocle, I'm, I'm sure that, that... Now you got me thinking about an entire world of mice with British accents. And it's not like they make their own tea. They'd definitely be stealing tea from 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 people's houses and then just sipping it. Maybe I instead of instead of cheese in a mouse trap, is it like a drop of tea or something? I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh I'm sure some people have done it probably for fancy rats. I've always kind of actually I heard the uh the tea breaks and stuff like that in in the UK are, are actually really calming and relaxing. I heard this guy, a uh, comedian, Kevin on stage. He said, uh, y'all just do this at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Everybody just stops and have, has a cup of tea. No wonder y'all think you're better than everybody else. <laughs> um, but that, that's kind of cool. I've, I've always wanted to, I've always only been outside the country once. And that was in Jamaica. That was a couple summers ago. But um, there's some more traveling I want to do. I'm only 22, so I got plenty of time. Uh, probably for fancy rats. Yep, Etsy has top hats for rat snakes, etc. Oh, I, I I didn't even think about the people that have um have pets that that and they want their pets to have accessories. That makes sense, actually. I mean, it's weird, but it makes sense. Alrighty, alrighty. Uh, we are going to get into that. I was going to say screw it and we were going to write uh, book 8 on stream but I really don't want to spoil any of that for you guys. Plus I'm looking at some ideas for some of the new characters uh, through Pinterest. Really great site for uh, in, uh, inspiration for character design. Um, it's just pretty much endless. See how many tabs I have open. Normally it's more. But, um, yeah, I'm probably going to get into some of that after sh after the stream. Uh, I only drew one character in the last week, Mend. I said before I already had her character uh, design in mind. Um, but I got some more to do. I got to draw Monolon, Titan. Monolon is the guy we're about to write about now. Uh, Titan, the new uh, character, alien space lord character I came up with, uh, Viper. Now, his name is not spelled like the snake Viper, and you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna see the way his name is spelled and why I spelled it that way. It looks like if he was made in the 90s. This is exactly how somebody who was trying to be cool or edgy would spell his name. This is not the case here. So I looked up uh, in the thesaurus um, synonyms for the word Lord, or I think it was Lord. And I found this word I've actually never seen before, Viscount. I thought it was discount because that's the way it's spelled. Um, but I took that as the first part of his name, the prefix of his name, if you will, and then par from parliamentarian, and made that the last part of his name. So I got viper from that. Um, it could be bipar. That's just I don't want to pronounce it like that. Um, but yeah. He's an, another one of my homage characters. You'll see how so 
when I draw him, if he ends up looking that way. But, um, yeah, he's going to be a part of uh, Malos's big bads, big, big bad group. They don't have a name yet. Uh, book eight, you have seven done? Yes, I do. I only have the first one out, but I wrote out, um, it was, uh, uh, Awakening is the one that's out, Descended Awakening. I have Anticipation done. Uh, the rest of them are not edited. The, the one that's out now has been edited, but the other ones have not been edited by, like, a professional editor yet. Um which is really that and maybe like the cover is the only thing keeping me from releasing those as well but I have uh, Descended Awakening like I said that's the one that's out Descended Anticipation that's the second one uh, Destruction that's the third I was going to try and remember the fourth but I, is it, it's Aftermath is the fourth uh, god dang it I know I'm missing one in here Ended. Okay, it's Awakening, Anticipation, Destruction, Aftermath, Divided. Forgot about Divided. What the hell happens in Divided? I don't remember. Uh, Afterlife, Nightmare. Nightmare was the one I just finished. I'm on book eight now, Beyond, which is like the space epic. And the characters that have been up until in book seven, like the main characters, are on Earth. Most of them are on Earth, but this takes place in space, so there's like one of the main characters that's taken on this space journey with a couple of other characters they've met along the way, and this entire book takes place in space. Um, the short stories I've been writing on stream are what has been happening on Earth while uh, some of these characters are in space. Um, like the, uh, the one we just finished, Re uh, Resistance Renaissance uh, Raven story. That one, that takes place during Beyond. Um, then book nine is the next one, United. This is supposed to be a combination of a bunch of protagonists from my other series that their stories, if their stories happen at the same time as the Ascended stuff, those protagonists are gonna come in and join the story as well, like an end game, if you will. And they're going to, uh, try and fight off this new threat I'm they're not gonna win they're not gonna win book 9 is when the tone shifts book 9 and 10 are when the tone tonal shifts another tonal shift happens for the Descended series and then book 10 Trinity is when the hero killers are released and it's the introduction of my biggest bad so far um, Malos a guy I created so he's unbeatable, pretty much. And he's the guy that comes up with the villain group made of the universe's biggest bads. Um, it'd be cool if the person we're about to write about, um, Monolon, was part of the group. But as far as his goal, it makes no damn sense. Because he's all about, his name is Monolon the Conqueror. So he's all about conquering other civilizations to prove his way is the right way. Um, and the villain group is all about freedom, but the way they go about it is in the most wrong way possible, which is what most people, why most people view them as villains. Some of them take pleasure in the methods they, they go about, you know, promoting freedom and all that. Like the main one, Malos, he's non-apologetic for anything he does. He's just kind of really all about the goal but he's having fun along the way of reaching his goal of making all of these races within the virtuous universe free um and he starts with earth of course because that's where he woke up um i i'd get into more about it but i don't want to spoil too much for you guys when we get to that point of releasing that book um so, yeah, Monolon's not going to be a part of this villain group. Uh, I can show you, I can tell you, don't look, don't look at the left side of the screen. I can tell you who's a part of it, but um, 
I, there are certain characters that are spoilers that I cannot tell you that are a part of. They're going to be a part of this villain group. So Malos, the leader of it, essentially. Uh, Detrius, who is the dragon of war. He's an alien dragon god from space. He's in uh, book eight, the one we're currently writing. Uh, can't say their name. Mara, sister of Detrius. Uh, Archaos, brother of Detrius. Titan, he is going to be the next villain in uh, the Resistance Renaissance short stories. Um, but, you know, he's not a one-off villain. Plus, his origin is kind of unclear because people are unsure whether he's human or alien or of alien origin. Because uh, there are several aliens, like world-conquering aliens that know about him. He's known as, like, a mercenary, pretty much, or an uh, assassin for hire. And, um, he's gonna be a part of that group. Viper, the guy I just told you about. Um, then there are others down here. Ruse, you guys haven't been introduced to Ruse in the series yet. Luminos, that's another. Tristan, he's a vampire. Uh, Anjani, she's, well, she's in book eight. Uh, and there are some others I'm not gonna mention. But... Uh, this whole villain group, I'm excited to explore more and get into more because I don't tend to write about the villain as much as I do the heroes. I like making my villains super badass and super cool and all that. And they're very capable of beating the heroes. Sometimes they don't, but this time they don't. I mean, they do. I was thinking the heroes beating the villain. This time the villains win. Um, but right now, I've been talking for too long. Oh, uh, oh, uh, are you on KU? KU, uh, kin is that Kindle Unlimited? Yes, I am. I am. The well, the book is. The book is. Uh, it's free on Kindle Unlimited if you have that. Free ninety nine minus the ninety nine. All right, so we're. We've been talking for about a half hour, but it, it's good to sometimes not just sit here and write with me just saying what I'm writing. Um, so we had the beats. I've said before, when I write beats out, they're never really in detail. And when I write, when I go according to the beats, most of my writing is improvisation. Um, I might have a line or two that I think I want to include at some point, like a, a dialogue line for a character to say, but other than that, it's it's uh, pretty much right by the seat of my pants. Uh, Pantheon, okay, let's remember where we were. Pantheon of eight smiled down upon me, light flashing from each, yet I felt nothing towards their warmth. I was ready for the reward I was promised. So he essentially just was in a tournament fighting his hybrid brothers and sisters. Uh, the gods kind of just put them together in this tournament to the death to see which hybrid combination of two alien races would be the strongest. His was um, the immortal alien race. Guess what their physiology is? They're immortal. And the seed alien race. Seeds get stronger every time they almost die. Now what's that? What's what's that a reference to? Uh, so essentially, why I'm writing it from Monolith's perspective is we're getting into the mind of. First of all, I don't write that many. Like the Descendant series is entirely um, third person omniscient, but I find it fun sometimes to write from first person point of view. I've only, this is my third time writing it. The two Resistance Renaissance stories were written from first person point of view and I enjoyed writing it like that. Only problem is, if I want to go off somewhere away from the character that I'm writing about or writing from the perspective of, obviously I can't. And there were a lot of things that had to be explained in dialogue later in the story in the last uh, POV story I wrote, which I kind of hate. So, um, but whatever. So I wanted to write from Monlon's perspective to get into the mind of somebody who's just 
evil by nature. Um, and I actually don't have many characters like that. Like, most of my characters, there's always... Tide, uh, need it. Appreciate the follow. Appreciate the follow. You just got us to the next... Oh, my God. Oh, my dad's calling me. Um... You just got us to the next follower goal. Shouts out to you. I'm gonna bump it up by. Oh wait, that's that ain't right. Uh, seventy. Let's bump this up to seventy-five. This is awesome. Uh, I create too many characters to do uh, first person ever. Exactly. But I'm I'm right with you there, uh, Sakaj, because the Descended series in the first book and Descended Awakening, there are thirty characters. Around my my uh, podcast co-host said there's around thirty characters. I never actually counted them. Probably should have, but there's around it's around there. They're not all main characters, of course, but it's a lot of characters to handle, especially if you're giving them normal names. And superhero names um, and that's a lot of names for people to remember so I co I'm constantly repeating superhero names over and over to get those names embedded into uh, the readers head so you know you'll see seismic's name over and over Ardench's name over and over Lux's name over and over so you remember oh this is the kid in the red hoodie that has the energy powers oh this is the kid in the college letterman jacket that has the earth manipulation powers oh this is the flying strong girl that in the red hero suit um but yeah i i, I my entire descendant series is way too many and that the 30 characters that's just the first book in book two anticipation i'm introducing more heroes that were that received the this, this superhero serum it gives them superpowers um, they're normal people before of course and they go to the hospital and get this injection and the ones that survive get oh the ones that survive get uh, superpowers um, so yeah yeah so we're in in the second book we're introducing even more characters essentially each book has at least there's at least one new character in each but um yeah uh what are you writing uh am i blind no no no, no. um sorry if it's difficult to see uh, it's definitely difficult for me this is not hd the window i'm looking at on uh twitch studio beta um but this is it's a uh, first person point of view origin story from one of my villains um pantheon of eight smiled down upon me light flashed from each yet i felt nothing towards their warmth i was ready for the reward i was promised so he essentially just killed his brothers and sisters in a tournament uh congratulations mon on you have bested your brothers and sisters in the tournament to test the best possible hybrid species the lead god of pride gall said do you have anything you'd like to say to us, all your fallings, or your fallen siblings? Where is my reward? The gods' smiles vanished as I asked my question. I was aware that I was just involved in a torment of killing off my siblings, or those that I grew with, rather. However, I ne had never felt any sort of passionate feeling to towards them. It was easy for me to kill. Um, so, where in the beats are we? We are the gods summon him. And tell him that they would like Flama to become a champion and tell him why. Yeah, not. Uh, that's some. Sometimes that's the issue when I write my beats. I'll have an idea in mind when I write the beat, but then not write it out. And then I don't remember what it was. Or sometimes I don't specify and I expect myself in the future to improvise on the spot. So that's probably what, what we're going to do here. It was easy for me to kill. Oh, I also need the list of the gods. Oh, darn. Uh, so we're probably going to have to open... Another... Document for the beats here. Uh, right. 
Good night. Uh, happy writing. A little bit late here. Oh, yeah, no problem. I know it's like uh, 2 a.m. in the UK or something. Close to 2. 2.30. Thank you for stopping by, Sakaj. Appreciate you. Um, let's... Actually, this needs to be its own thing. You guys don't need to see really what's on the left side of the screen because that's not where we're writing. Should give me the list. Okay, Gaul. Is Rhea the last one? She is. Okay. Okay. No, kind of looks cluttered. Uh, uh, I gotta remember this is my own perspective. Let's say pocket dimensions. In order. So, uh, pocket dimensions. Say train and uh, what was the word I'm looking for? Learn. of us in our own pocket dimensions and become the strongest possible hybrid you can become. Looks, uh, we cried. Oops. God explained. Reason mm -hmm. Hunter Channel and goes montage of body killing training by each of the gods. Each while training him teaches them something different and positive about their domain and what they uh -oh, vertical. What they represent. Okay. Let me check here. Mustache swirling guy has internal dialogue about what about twisting what the gods represent into his own ideology. Turns on them, killing them all at once. Yep, okay. So we just gotta get through this training thing and problem this.
open the portal. And let me through. What should the balance got? I should also describe what each of the pocket dimensions looks like. What should the balance gods pocket dimension look like? Hmm. I just realized 70, 70 people that followed me on Twitch and some of which come back to watch this pretty big number. Pretty big number. I don't even think I know 70 people in real life. side to my left to let's say to the west is flowing with light rains. Uh, whoops specific targets. To this side. 
Let's not say choke, let's say suffocate. for the reason of getting the bad out of the way first, but because I was most intrigued by it. say physical wave of negativity gave my body pause and I powered through it and walked behind God into the flames. Not 
into the percent of course. Trees. Two blades, both consumed with. Let's say the negativity, heat, and uh, smoke surrounding us. But I was willing to prove I could best him. So let's look at his list of abilities to double check and make sure he doesn't do anything that he actually can't do. He has his nebula fist yet. I think the gods grant him nebula fist at the end. Yeah. Thank you. 
decreasing. I was going to say lessening. I don't think that's a word, is it? I guess it is. Welcome to the stream. Who's that emo? Uh, a spuggy. Hi. Okay. Welcome to the stream. Uh, this caused. Oops, that should be me. Okay, just gonna be a question. What was ahead? Was it only this side of Gans dimension that affected me this way? Entirety of the end dimension did the other gods dimensions affect me like this. Uh how long have I been writing? Uh you mean on stream or just in general? There was like a, a highlight thing I could put behind people's names so I could see against the black background on uh, Twitch Studio beta. Uh, I started creating stories as like a kid in sixth grade, uh, like after school, and I was writing comics and stuff. But seriously, writing. I switched to screenwriting sophomore year, started writing stories in my spare time there, sophomore year of college, so, and I just graduated, so, like, four years, I think, say four years, sophomore year, and through, the, and then I did it, junior year, senior year, and then I've been out of college for a year, so, seriously been writing for about four years. Oh, shoot. Yeah, graduation was a year ago. Nice, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, hmm. Oh, it's not a one. We're going to go like another two, three minutes because I started the stream late. Uh, it was an entire game of dimension and other gods' dimensions affect me like this. I came to another realization when I thought back to what the gods said about training that would. We just spilt coffee. I appreciate the follow. Appreciate the follow. Used to write a lot more when I was a teenager. Do you do you not write a lot now? Is it because of well, why not? Writing is good for good for the soul. We're gonna update the follower goal. Got a lot of followers today. Appreciate it, guys. I'm gonna start trying to post to. Uh, I don't know if you guys came from the Twitch Writers Network stream, not stream Discord. We're supposed to there a lot more. Um, no relation. I thought that's what the God said about. 
training that would hang on, uh, that would nope, that's not the beat. Oh wait, no, it's in the document it's all on the wall. I'm looking for another document. Training that could kill others. Oop, could kill. Did my ground. That's can Rushed at me. Swords evenly. Um, a sword in each hand. Trying to think of something symmetrical, symmetrical to describe there, but no. Uh, all right. So I started college. The only writing I was able to do was academic. Okay, but now that I'm just finishing up my last couple classes over the summer, I'm hoping to get back to writing one more. Yeah, that's what's up. I I, I get that. Um, since I was screenwriting, I wasn't doing this writing for my classes. So I was kind of missing out on it. Well, not really missing out on it, but like I would waste a lot of time that I could be doing writing screenplays and be writing these stories. But now that I graduated, I don't have to focus on screenplays. Um, and I picked this screenwriting over English because I feel like screenwriting degree would be more useful in the real world. Um, yeah, English could also help me with writing books, but if I ever want to take these books into becoming movies, I could also help with the process, because I have the necessary required training for it. I know how to write a screenplay. I've written a few. Um, but that's what's up, Lena. We're gonna, uh, stop the stream now. Uh, we're about to start a fight scene here. I, I kind of want to limit the amount of fight scenes that happen in this one. I kind of just want him to be in his own head about what each of his, well not his gods, each of these gods uh, teach him about what they represent and you know his thought process into twisting it to make it fit his whole evil uh, agenda. So let's do our plugs and get on out of here. Uh, what genre do you uh, write screen plays? Um, my senior project was a horror, but it's kind of like anything with a supernatural edge to it. I'm not, I could write drama like. I'm confident in my ability to write drama, even though I've never written it, but, like, I like non stuff that most likely wouldn't take place in the real world. I feel like writing and screenplays and movies are all for escapism, so, you know, I'd want to see or read about stuff that wouldn't happen in real life and, you know, immerse myself into this other world. Um, so yeah, that's why I do, I, I mainly do supernatural anything. Uh, most of my stuff is uh, superhero uh, specific, but my uh, final project for screenwriting was a, a horror script, because I wanted to see if I could tackle it. I don't think it was that great. It, it was a, a horror movie that took place in a movie theater. Meta, I know. But um... Yeah, I, I kind of just wanted to challenge myself with that, but I, I, I mainly like the superhero, superhero stuff. Really interesting. Yeah, I've always been more interested in writing high medieval fantasy. Hey, respect, mad respect, because I can never understand whatever the hell 
Because, like, once you introduce magic, I, I can understand knights and all of that stuff and all these really old-sounding names, like Arthur. Um, but, like, uh, once you introduce magic, you lose me. Magic can be... Superpowers can essentially be magic, but I don't understand it, like, once they introduce rules to it. Um... And when they start saying you, you introduce, sometimes there's you got to speak in order to cast magic and all that other stuff with any sort of fantasy genre. Um, and, and, and I've never that those, there's two things I've never been able to understand, and I respect anybody that does uh, that can write it well. It's uh, like fantasy magic, and um, the other is anything to do with time, time travel, time anything, because I. Those two things, uh, they just lose me. But, um, high medieval fantasy. Okay. So, there's a difference between high and low, right? Low medieval fantasy. Low is, like, down to earth, kind of in the real world. But high is, like, fantastical world, all these other creatures and, and lords and kings and dragons and stuff. And, like, it, it's kind of just a whole other world, right? Um, I'm going to start doing my plugs. We're going to get out of here. Um, so if you want to support on Patreon, we got our first patron. Shouts out to Mom. Mom's always out there supporting. Um, but if you want to support your boy, we have a Patreon. We have a donation link in the chat now and in the panels. And consider subscribing on Twitch if you're watching on YouTube. Subscribing on YouTube is free, so I don't know why you haven't done that already. But, um, yeah, there we go. I'm going to have to update my Patreon goal. Um, but if you want to read the first five chapters of my first published book, uh, Descended Awakening, that's available on Scribble Hub and Wattpad. Ignore the rating. The rating is some jerk decided to give it two stars. You'll see the actual rating in a second. Um, uh, Scribble Hub and Wattpad have the first five chapters free. If you like the chap, if you like the book so much, you can go ahead and find it on Amazon. Uh, yeah, I like involving with logic groups. Those are dope, too. I have a superhero that has uh, villains that are based off of mytho mythological creatures. Um, his, his rogues gallery is essentially all things based on mythological creatures and villains and stuff. But yeah, that's that's what's up. Um, paperback, Descend the Awakening, only $20. Kindle Unlimited, $3.99. Minus the 99. I think Sakaj earlier, uh, I know you probably went to bed, but mentioned something about Kindle Unlimited. Um, so it's there on Kindle Unlimited. And Kindle Digital, if you don't have Kindle Unlimited, it's only $10. Only difference between, well, it's half the price of the paperback, but the paperback, you get to hold this thickness in your hands. All this thickness. And, uh, you know, it takes them in shit to you. Like, I think a week. But if you get it on Kindle Digital, you get it uh, immediately. Um, if you enjoy it, please be sure to give it a rating. The rating, you only give it a star rating. If you give it a rating and review, I shout you out like these lovely people down here. Ratings boost the rankings in the Amazon store, so that's why they're so important. Um, but I think that's I think that's every plug. So let's get on out of here. Let's get on it. Let's shout out every peep, everybody that was in the chat and the new followers. And we're going to uh, get on out of here. Uh, wait, is anybody going to have to... I might have to find somebody to read. Mm, Itanchi streaming. So let's read Itanchi. Um, so shouts out to moms in the chat. Uh, Sakaj, uh, Grim Reality, and Lena. And thank you, Grim Re Grim's Reality, uh, Ty Nedic, and Lena Spoke Coffee uh, for the follows today. We met our next follower goal. So, let's get out of here. Uh, we're going to raid Itanchi. Hopefully, I can hear his live reaction because sometimes my uh, thing mess messes up. Alright. Alright, so we have the raid now button. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, 
and I'll see everybody back here tomorrow night from 8 to 9. So I gotta get my game capture card so I can figure out how to stream without relying on the PS4. But um, thank you guys so much for watching. This is J Base Phoenix once again.